Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell's Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. In this series, we use the missions in the game Firefight to illustrate one or more aspects of World War II infantry tactics at the company level and below. In this campaign, we are playing through the Battle of France as the French, with eight battles over the course of May and June 1940. Everyone knows about the historical outcome of French operational and strategic defeat at the hands of the Germans. But I want to see if the French, using historical weapons tactics and doctrine, can defeat the Germans at the tactical level. In this episode, Cuirassier, in the Launois River Valley, we must lead your armoured column in a counterattack on the German positions to buy time for the beleaguered French army. The River Launois snakes through a wooded valley and is joined by many tributaries causing regular flooding. Small farms and hamlets dot the sides of the valley and are connected via tracks through the dense woods. Each episode, we conduct basic mission analysis, develop and analyse possible courses of action, then decide and execute the plan in real time, followed by lessons learned. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to buy me a coffee, the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. We in the 3rd DLM are supporting the British attack on Arras. But the Germans have cut the road leading to the town, stopping us from resupplying the garrison. We must clear that road. This is a map of the battle space, overlain with terrain features in red. If you're interested, these maps are available in the game folder. The Launois River and its tributaries flow along a valley formed by a series of hills marked A to F. Nestled amongst the hills lies the village of Launois. A north-south road runs past the village. To the south, it meets a Y junction with a road going east passing over a crossing point over the Launois River. The large hill next to the village provides observation over the valleys and roads. The hill has good fields of fire over the crossing point and each of the valleys the road crosses. The hills are forested, allowing concealment of troops and vehicles, but the valleys along the north-south road have little cover or concealment from the large hill. The valleys are therefore obstacles and must be crossed with caution. Key terrain is the high ground surrounding the village. Decisive terrain is the large hill, from which the enemy can observe and fire on any movement along the road as it passes through the valleys. Two avenues of approach are marked. First, crossing the river and approaching the large hill from a flank. Second, along the north-south road. The Germans can control movement along the north-south road at each point it passes through the valleys. Three potential ambush locations are marked, each able to be covered by fire from the large hill. German machine guns and armour could knock out vehicles as they pass through the valleys, allowing infantry to engage anyone on foot. The Germans could maintain their reserve and fire support in the village of Launois. I do not know the forces at my disposal until the mission starts. The description tells me the French have an armoured column. I assume this includes a mix of medium and heavy tanks. The first course of action is for the column to avoid the main road and instead move up to a forming up point to the northeast. Using an artillery smoke mission for concealment, the vehicles will conduct a river crossing, taking the large hill as the intermediate objective before assaulting the village as the primary objective. Points of maximum danger are marked at the crossing point bridge and during the river crossing. This plan would use a concealed approach and the element of surprise and would leave the French in control of the high ground and the village. But a river crossing with vehicles is risky. For starters, I'm assuming the vehicles can actually cross the river. Also, this plan would clear the large hill, but not the road. The second course of action focuses on clearing the road as the intermediate objective. French armour would move along the road to a forming up point at the Y junction. Artillery smoke and on-call HE would protect the vehicles as they crossed potential ambush points in the valleys. Then, with the road secure, the French could take the village as the primary objective, outflanking any units on the large hill and destroying them in detail. Points of maximum danger are marked at the crossing point bridge, both potential ambush locations, and the ford near Launois. This plan relies on the firepower and mobility of the armour to force their way through any ambushes on the road and deal with enemy positions on the large hill. The risk is that the French are essentially triggering every ambush along the road to do so, and this could result in higher casualties. But a route must be proved as well as cleared, and this plan better meets the mission intent. Chapter 2, Setting up the Tanks. Article 2, Mixture. Paragraph 43. The mix of medium tanks and heavy tanks 
depends essentially on the natural or artificial obstacles presented by the field of action and the strength of the opposing organisations. When the shape of the land favours the installation by the enemy of distant engagements, and when the intervention of enemy tanks is feared, it is always advisable to provide for the use of heavy tanks. Let's position our forces for battle. There is the primary objective, the village of La Noire. Let's review our forces using the information panel on the bottom right of the screen. This shows soldier statistics and vehicle controls. Unit 1 is a Renault R35 with a 37mm SA-18 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Lieutenant Pires. Unit 2 is a Renault R35 with a 37mm SA-18 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Lieutenant Berlin. Unit 3 is a Renault R35 with a 37mm SA-18 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Lieutenant Hamon. Unit 4 is a Somor S35 with a 47mm SA-35 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Sergeant Fevrier. Unit 5 is also a Somor S35. It is commanded by Sergeant Lhomme. Unit 6 is also a Somor S35. It is commanded by Lieutenant Fernandez. He is in overall command of the operation. This is a good mix of medium and heavy tanks, but with no supporting infantry. And so we begin. The first R35 moves up to the Launoy River crossing. It turns and crosses the bridge. This is the first potential ambush location. The enemy could have the bridge ranged. The first R-35 crosses and moves to the safety of the woods opposite. The second R-35 crosses safely. And the third. The Somor S-35 now move up to the bridge. The Renaults now move in single file down the road.
The first Samoa crosses the bridge. The second S35 crosses the bridge. The column is shielded by terrain and vegetation from the likely enemy positions on the large hill. Soon they will reach the second potential ambush location. Time for the smoke mission. Requesting artillery. Shot. The column consolidates short of the T-junction. The first adjusting round lands. Wind pushes the smoke southeast. The first Renault moves up to the edge of the valley. The others follow. Shot. The round flies overhead. The road winding through the Little River Valley is the second potential ambush location. Shot. The third adjusting round lands just over the target. Shot. The fourth round lands on target and the guns move to fire for effect. The Renault starts to move into the valley. No enemy seen.
French artillery fire the smoke bombardment. The remaining smoke rounds are directed to land on the other hill. Requesting artillery. Requesting artillery. The Renault moves across the valley. Lieutenant Pires is alert for contact. shot. The smoke is blinding anything on the large hill. The Samoa now move up. The Renault traversed the valley without incident. The heavy Samoa tanks now take position in the valley mouth. When the smoke lifts, they will engage anything on the large hill. Smoke from the first barrage has dissipated but the second barrage is providing a perfect screen to the French movement. The Samoa take the high ground on the opposite side of the valley. They will cover the Renault's movement across the third potential ambush location. The Renault move up. <coughs> Contact tank. A Panzer 38T in ambush the other side of the valley. The first R35 is destroyed by an APCR shell through the hull upper front. The Samoa now moves around the ridge for a flanking shot. The Renault cooks off. The Open Panzer fire. keeps firing.
hit. The Somwa destroys the Panzer 38T with an APC shell through the hull lower left. Reinforcements have arrived. Two more Somwa heavy tanks. The Panzer cooks off. Soldat Cornet is killed, and Lieutenant Perez wounded. The reinforcing Somwa tanks start to move up. The second Renault now advances to the valley. The Panzer has been dealt with, but other threats may remain. The Somoa provide overwatch. The Renault crosses the valley under the watchful eyes of the Samoa. Both Renault form line abreast on the reverse slope just short of the ridge. Both advance to clear the high ground. The tanks are providing mutual support to each other. Contact. Vehicle crew. Lieutenant Perez slowly makes his way to the rear. The reinforcing Samoa move up. German infantry in the low ground. Water splashes as bullets overshoot and hit the river.
the Samoa moved to the small rise overlooking the river. This will give a better view of Lanois. Contact tank, a Panzer 35T in the village. Before it can return fire or withdraw, the Somo S-35 is destroyed by an APC shell through the superstructure lower front. Medic! All three crew members are wounded. The R-35 move in from the flank to target the Panzer. Hit! Lieutenant Hamon's R-35 destroys the Panzer 35T with an AP shell through the hull upper right. Hamon's tank is hit by a fast firing cannon. He returns fire and destroys a Panzer 2C with an AP shell through the superstructure lower front. The R-35 maintain overwatch of Lanoa village. The Somoa provides suppressing fire. Medic! And the reinforcing Somoa moved to clear the woods of infantry. The panzer and infantry in the woods would have been a tough ambush for infantry or supply trucks. As it was, they've given the tankers a bloody nose. The French have now taken the intermediate objective, the road to Arras. The infantry start to fall back, but there is nowhere to hide.
Amon's Renault now prepares to cross the River Lanois and enter the village. The other tanks provide overwatch. The river is crossed and the French secure the primary objective, the village of Lanois. There is no sign of any other Germans. Victory. Cuirassier, lead your armoured column in a counterattack on the German positions to buy time for the beleaguered French army. French forces, 18 survived, 2 wounded, 3 killed, 2 vehicles lost. German forces, 29 survived, 7 wounded, 16 killed, 3 vehicles lost. If 29 survived, the Germans probably had at least another 2 infantry squads somewhere. You did exceptionally well in quickly capturing the objective and took few losses despite being up against fairly strong opposition. Your commanders rate your performance as excellent. Three gold stars. So, what did we learn? The value of teamwork. The armoured column moved and fought as a team. The lighter Renaults advanced, while the heavier Samoa tanks provided overwatch. And within each group, the tanks also worked as a team, covering each other's movement. The two tanks lost by the French were both hit by ambush fire, but the ambushes were quickly destroyed by the other tanks in the team, and the column continued to advance. The armoured column was also supported by artillery, who fired the smoke barrage to screen the move across the first valley and had HE rounds ready to go. Tanks fight best as a team, not as individual platforms. Teamwork won the coveted three gold stars. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and donate and stay tuned for the next episode.